So you need to learn how to scan for IP addresses, devices, and find vulnerable services to become that elite hacker. I'm getting Any hacking activity, whether it's red team, penetration testing, naughty stuff, <clears throat> you name it, needs to start with you being able to scan the network for different devices, IP addresses, and most importantly, finding out what services are actually running on the network and which may have vulnerabilities. I am a vulnerable guy. Nmap or Network Mapper is one of the most commonly used tools in ethical hacking. It's super, super easy to install, easy to use, and has a bunch of super powerful scanning built into it. Take over blast control world government. We'll start off today with installing it. If you've already done this, then just skip far ahead in the video. I'll put chapters in the description and all that good stuff. Nmap can be installed on Linux and Windows. You can get that by going to nmap.org slash zenmap. If you click on download, go to Windows and select the latest stable release, and then it'll download, install it, and you're ready to go. I can't believe that we're lucky enough to be alive at the same time as this. If you're on Linux, you can use this terminal command to download it. Once again, super easy. As I've already stated, I'm using Kali Linux, so it's already installed and we should be ready to go. <laughs> So the first scan we're going to look at is the ping scan. It's simple. It checks if hosts are up and running on the network. You can use it with the command that you can see now um, using the SN flag, <laughs> followed by the IP address of the target or the target network. The N in the SN stands for no port scan. So as I say there, this can be the IP address of the single machine or host or an entire network range. Before we go any further, I need to quickly introduce to you how TCP actually works. So TCP stands for the Transmission Control Protocol. It's one of the main protocols of the IP suite and without it, a lot of network as we know it would not work how it does today. The main idea of the Transmission Control Protocol is to ensure that data is sent reliably between hosts and that they arrive in the correct order with no errors. So imagine you're meeting a new friend um, you first wave maybe to get their attention. That's the equivalent of your client sending a SYN or a synchronized packet to the server. Your new friend then waves back, the server responding with a SYN ACK or a synchronized acknowledged packet. And then finally, when you're both ready to chat, you wave back again. This is the client sending an acknowledge packet or ACK packet back to the server. The connection's now established. Simple, you can play Fortnite or whatever it is that friends do. The next scan we want to look at is a TCP connect scan. Uh, this is used when you don't have raw packet privileges. I can maybe explain that one in another video. Definitely not something for today. We can do the TCP connect scan with the nmap command flag dash st and then once again specifying the target. Running this scan completes that TCP handshake. You see why we covered that now, yeah? This scan's typically slower, but it is more reliable. And typically as it completes that full handshake, it can be quite noisy and firewalls and security teams do pick up on these types of connections. It's my boat. So far we've been pretty noisy and maybe we want to be a bit more stealthy and Nmap does actually have a setting for this and this is the TCP SYN scan, often known as the stealth scan and it is the default for Nmap and is super, super efficient. We can do this scan using the dash SS flag. The way this works is it sends a SYN or a synchronized packet to the target and waits to hear back, waits for a response from that target and when that is received, usually again back in the form of either a synchronize or a synchronize acknowledge packet, then our client sends a reset to close that connection. So that TCP handshake never fully completes. If we receive that reset back from that target, it means that the port we're testing is closed. The next scan I wanted to touch up on is a UDP scan. Now UDP is a little different to TCP. So UDP is a connectionless protocol. Essentially during a connection, it doesn't perform that handshake that we've talked about. It basically just throws data packets at the target. That's how it sends its data. This makes it a lot faster, but also a lot less reliable. So applications like video streaming use UDP. That's probably the best example. And when things are buffering, that's when those UDP packets are not arriving and it's basically losing data. So to run a UDP scan, we use the dash S U flag on our command in the terminal, followed by the target once again. Quick editing note, UDP scans can take a long time due to the nature of the protocol, so I added these flags here to speed it up for the video. The dash P flag I'll come to later, the max retries flag is there to prevent Nmap from retransmitting the probe to the target ports. This sends a UDP packet to the target and listens for responses. If we don't get a response, then it's slightly different. The port is either open or filtered. If we receive a response back, usually in the form of an ICMP port and reachable message, then that tells us that that port we are looking for is closed. 
before we get into any more of the cool stuff, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait for that. There's one quick thing I need to explain. So when you're scanning a target and you're identifying ports that are available on a device, Nmap will present you with six different port states, depending on the status of that port. One of life's great mysteries. The first that we have is open. This means that the service that you've targeted is actively listening on that port or there's an application running on that port. Next is closed, where there is no service listening, but the port is accessible. If you see a filtered result, it means that Nmap can't actually determine whether that's open or closed because of packet filters that are blocking the probes. This could be something like a firewall that's in the way on the network. You may get unfiltered, which indicates that the port is inaccessible, but Nmap can't tell if it is open or closed or not. And you also might get open and filtered together, which usually means that Nmap suspects that it's open, but the response that it's received back from the scan makes it a little unclear. Finally, Nmap might give you closed or filtered, which suggests that the tool can't determine if the port is closed or filtered. So once we've identified available targets as we've done earlier and we've seen some ports that they might have open or closed, we can start looking at some of the more advanced options in Nmap. A port scan? No, no, this is major. The first one I want to show you is one of the most useful in my opinion, which is the service version detection. So service version detection does exactly what it says on the tin. It identifies software versions on those open ports and we do this with the dash SV flag. When we run this, it will go out, it will try and find the ports that are open once again, but it will also try and give you the versions of the applications of the protocols that are running on those ports and we can then use that later on to find which of those applications are vulnerable which we can then try and exploit later on. If we want to identify operating systems and their versions, we use the dash O flag. It then analyzes the responses from various probes that Nmap sends, as each operating system has its own unique way of responding to them, which is sometimes called a fingerprint. So Nmap will send its SYN packet and it'll analyze the flags, TTLs, window size, and other parameters that it gets back in its response. As I've already said, different OSs respond with very different things. Um, so Nmap then goes and compares this against its own database of known fingerprints. When it finds a match, it can usually pretty confidently identify the operating system and return that to us. I thought I was doing a pretty good job. So a couple of final notes and pieces I want to go over that I think are kind of important. So the dash P flag can be used to specify the port ranges that you want to scan. So by default, Nmap scans the 1000 most common ports for each protocol. Using this flag, you can scan whichever ports you want. Please remember though that there are only 65,535 ports. So don't go scanning stuff like port number 100,000 because that's just not going to work. You underestimate my power. There's some really cool, powerful and customizable stuff which you can do with Nmap, which is beyond the scope of the basics and probably beyond the scope of this video as well. But if this has helped you, then that's that's awesome. And you're on the road to becoming that elite hacker. Be sure to have a play with it. I'll leave some resources and stuff in the description as well. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment.